So an hour or two ago, I got a comment on asking for me to make a video on self-learning or self-teaching math. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, I decided I'd go ahead and make that right now rather than sometime over the weekend because I have other things to do this weekend. Um, honestly, I don't know why I haven't thought of it before. This is why I'm always asking you guys for questions because I'm not going to be able to think of all the things to make videos on, right? I'll start with resources first. And then I'll kind of take a step back to the like the grander, more overarching aspects of self-learning math, or really anything, um, at least from my you know kind of limited scope and perspective. So resources. One, I would suggest getting books with problems. If you get any kind of book on a math topic, chances are it's going to be intended as either a textbook or a supplementary content for a course. So like. This, which I just did a review on like 20 minutes ago, it's got questions in it. All of them might not have answers in them. I would get one that has a solution manual because if you get a math book and you're doing problems and you don't know if you're doing it the right or wrong way, then it's basically useless, right? Um, so in that case, it might just be a good idea to get a, a standard textbook rather than something like an undergraduate text in mathematics or a Dover book on mathematics or you know any other type of kind of genre of math book that you could find. So books with problems with a solution manual. For YouTube, there's, there's thousands of hours of great content as long as we're talking about Calc 3 and below. As soon as you get into differential equations and above, it's gonna get a little more rarefied, a little harder to find content and even harder to find good content that's actually helpful. If you're, if we're talking about math at DiffieQ or above, you're mainly going to be limited to books, with some exceptions. I mean, it's the YouTube differential equation community isn't non-existent, but it's it, you can't even compare it to algebra or trig or pre-calc. You just can't, because that's what most people need help on. But anyhow, calculus below, YouTube's great. Uh, I would suggest Patrick JMT, Professor Leonard, who is actually about to start a differential equation series which I'm very interested in because I have to retake differential equations because I didn't get a high enough grade for my major. And also Math BFF for the same calculus and below. Um, she might have also done a little bit of Diffie Q. I'm not sure. I don't believe so. Um, also things like MIT OpenCourseWare. They make a lot of their STEM courses online, like the actual course, the, the class. It might not have problems associated, maybe a couple like in-class examples, but it's a good thing if you want like a formal lecture type, you know, information and material. Those are really good. I know they have a, a good bit of math. I know uh, Gilbert Strand has almost all of his linear algebra stuff on there. I've watched a good bit of those. I also own one of his textbooks. And then also, if you're doing this maybe in lieu of a formal education, like at a community college, or at a university or college level. If you have room in your budget, I would consider a tutor. The tutor's gonna be able to do the things you can't do by yourself, which is potentially get clarification. So that's the good thing about having like a formal education. You can always get clarification. You can restate a question in terms that make more sense to you and get a concrete yes or no answer from, you know, we'll call them experts. Uh, you can't do that yourself. So if you come up, if you stumble upon a problem, you don't understand what it's asking or how to get to the answer or how the textbook or the person who came up with the question got to the answer. You don't have anyone to ask if you're by yourself, but if you have a professor, a teacher, or a private tutor, then you can do that. So I would consider private tutoring if it's within your budget and you can afford it. Um, even, you know, an hour or two a week, collect up, collect up all the questions you've accrued over that week and then just sit down and make that time as productive as possible and get your money's worth. So that's the resources that I have. Textbooks, YouTube, a tutor if you can afford it. As far as the other stuff goes, I would say the same thing applies to self-learning something, you know, math included, as it does to a formal education. One of which is your success is going to be directly correlated to how much time you put into it. So the more good quality time and effort you put into something, the better your results are going to be you know, the better you're going to understand it, all of that good stuff. It might be harder to learn in general, at least from my personal standpoint. And it's harder for me to self-learn things because, like I said before, I come up with questions, I hit roadblocks, 
I feel like I'm beating my head against brick walls and I don't have anyone to ask very specific questions or theoretical questions or trying to restate a question so that I understand it better. So it may take you longer to learn, which, you know, isn't a bad thing if if all you if all you can do is self-learn something, then it's still better than nothing, right? Um, self-learning stuff is not great for procrastinators like me. It's very hard for me to find the motivation to do something that I don't have to do. I, I have to... I can bring myself to do math homework because I know I'm going to take a test on it or an exam. I'm going to get a grade. If that grade isn't satisfactory, maybe I'll fail the class. Maybe I'll have to retake it. So there are real distinct dire consequences if I don't devote time and good quality time and effort to my stuff, to my homework and my coursework and reading and all of that stuff. But if I'm self-learning something like I'm trying to do with programming, R and Python, it's, it's very hard for me to find the motivation to do it because no one's making me do it. I don't have to take a test at the end of the week. If I don't learn it, there's not really any consequences except maybe for five or ten years down the road when I want to apply to a job or I'm trying to do a job and that, that skill would be make it a lot better or easier for me and it would generally be useful. You know, in the here and now, there's no consequence for me not learning something that I desire to self-learn. So it's probably going to be a little bit harder if you're already a procrastinator like me. If you have a problem with that too, I would suggest committing time on paper, which is what I do. I, I have a schedule, I write down the things that I need to do. Uh, sometimes if I'm dealing with finals, I devote certain hour quotas. Like I want to do three hours in this subject this day or two hours this day. The next day I might switch those figures or whatever else. And that helps me stay consistent. If I don't devote time, you know, reasonable expectations. I can't do eight hours of math every single day, even if I physically had eight available hours. My, my brain would probably fry. So you have to be realistic about what you, what you can expect of yourself. And once you have that figure in mind, then I would suggest putting it on paper so it's there. Because it's easy to overlook something if you, if you never committed to it, you never wrote it down. Because then you can just forget about it. And if you forgot, then that's it. It, it may as well have never existed. Write it on paper. Put it, put it in, in an app on your phone. Give yourself a reminder on your computer, whatever. Have your, your spouse, your friend remind you something something to to make you accountable to and generally speaking you know most people know once they're late teens early adults they know what kind of what kind of environment suits them for learning whether they need music um you know to block out distractions or, or white noise or you know classical music or whatever or if they need total silence or if they want to be in a darkly lit calm room or if they want to be somewhere really bright with a ton of whiteboards or whatever most people, generally speaking, know what type of environment works for them. And if you know what works for you, then I would say do it and try and perfect it as much as possible. If you're like me and you get distracted really easily, get some nice headphones, listen to something, or get some noise canceling ones like I do so that you don't have to worry about distractions. Because if you don't have anyone to hold you accountable, anyone to ask questions to, and no one to uh, make you commit to certain times, i.e. going to class in a formal setting, then the amount of time you put into yourself staring at the book or the paper or the screen and really getting into the flow of it and totally immersing yourself in it, that's gonna make all the difference in the world because you no longer have anything else to supplement your learning process, if that makes sense. Basically, that's what I got. I hope this was um, interesting or, or helpful to some degree, but thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.